This is the 10x your business podcast. Are you ready? Welcome to the 10x your business podcast where it's all about 10x your business results. Get more clients, make more money and have more free time. And now your host, entrepreneur, best-selling author, trainer and international speaker, Itai Paz. Welcome back to the 10X Your Business Podcast. I'm very, very excited. I have an amazing, amazing person, guest with me today, Rabbi Isamar Ginsberg. Hello, Isamar. Hello, hello, Itai. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Always an honor to be with you. You're one of the smartest people I've ever come across. As uh, you know, I've spoken at some of your events. I know you're an amazing person, and I haven't heard any of the podcast episodes yet, but I'll make sure to listen. I'm sure they're all fantastic, especially this one. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you know, we know each other for, what, like seven years or so, something like that. We met the first time, I think it was in my event, and you're a rabbi. So this is something, you know, I want to ask, you know, people will ask and think about, you're a rabbi, so uh, you have, like, uh, other commitments, religious commitments on a daily basis. So how did you end up on internet and internet marketing and being, you know, so smart in that? You're going to get me in big trouble here in my community, Itai. Um, I basically grew up, I, I, you know, I, I was born in 1980. I'm 36. And I better shut my phone as a courtesy to your listeners. Sorry about that. And when I was a kid, we had a computer. That was before computers had hard drives. You had to, you know, the computer started, and if you didn't put in a disk, then the computer just didn't do anything. Um, but as computers came out, and then the internet became, you know, something. And at the time, it was CompuServe, Prodigy, and America Online were the three sort of big internet companies. And what happened was that I found a company in California on America Online selling computers, used computers from Federal Express, the shipping company, for two hundred dollars a piece. And I knew that locally, you couldn't get computers for less than $300 a piece. So I started buying them from California, an Arab guy in California. His name was Abu Zubir. And I started buying them for 200 bucks a piece. And after buying a couple of them and selling them locally through the classifieds, first of all, it taught me a tremendous amount that the internet really makes the world much flatter. Some guy that I, don't, you know, that I would have never found locally is suddenly very accessible because he advertised on America Online and the computers for sale section. After buying a couple and selling them, I then, my dad told me, he said, you know, why don't you ask for a discount? I'm like, I didn't even know that such a thing was possible. Anyway, I said, you know, I'm buying a couple of computers from you. I'd like a better price. He says, okay, how about $175 a computer? So suddenly I was making $125 a piece. Anyway, so I started to, I, it's not like I one day just saw this internet and tried to grasp it all. Because I grew up with it and I watched it become what it is today, it's been a much it's, it's been a much more natural process than a guy who wakes up today and says, okay, what's WordPress, what's CMS, what's LinkedIn, what's the difference between LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's information overload and overwhelm and people trying to understand a lot and the internet has so much misinformation, there's so much information on it, which means so much misinformation on it that people end up spending lots of time and lots of money doing what worked three years ago. So I sort of grew up with the internet, let's call it, and the, um, a person who's very fascinated by different technology and a person who likes to get to the bottom of how technology works and why it works and how to make it work better and differently than other people are using it, that's sort of how I uh, got to do what I do. An example of this would be, just by the way, there's many people on social media, okay? Everybody's on social media. I'm not just talking about the fact that there's different forms of social media and they're not the same, meaning to say that LinkedIn is different than Twitter, is different than Facebook, is different than Snapchat, and each one can be used in different ways, and people who think they're all just, you know, it's like, do I want pizza from that store or that store? That's not the way it works at all, and that's in and of itself. If, you're, if your listeners demand, enough of them demand, I'll come back another time on your, on your, blah, on your podcast and I'll talk about that. But in addition to all that stuff about how social media is different, the most important thing, which I wanted to get to was, was that social media can make people money. 
But for most people, social media does not make people money, and that's because they do not understand how to use social media to make money. So for example, there's this guy who owns a business, or this lady who owns a business, and she's currently spending money in advertising. And she decides, eh, what do I gotta spend money in advertising for? I'll go on Twitter, I'll make a Twitter account, I'll start tweeting, and I'll do business from me a red cent. Or in Israel they would say, one cost you a shekel. Now, um, so they go and they spend 150 hours and they tweet and they interact and they tweet back and they retweet and they're building, you know, they're following and unfollowing and refollowing so that the people should hopefully follow them back. They're doing the whole, the whole, the whole shebang over here. And then at the end of the day, after 150 hours, somebody buys a new uh, a nail clipper from them. And they're so excited. See, I didn't have to advertise. I got people off social media. It was free. Free traffic. So let me ask you a question. You spent 150 hours of your life to sell a $5 item, which you made on that $5 item. You made $4.99 and it was profit. So if your time had no value, then you did a wonderful job, maybe. But being you spent 150 hours of your life, was it really worth it? Wouldn't it have been, wouldn't it have been more worthwhile to you to spend some money or to know what you're doing and to do it right and to make in that 150 hours 500,000 times as much money? Exactly. You actually touched <clears throat> a very important point. Uh, we always say there's free traffic and there's paid traffic. So paid traffic is very easy. You know, you pay for whatever, Google, Facebook, which everyone knows. There are other options. Let's say these two platforms. And as long as you pay, you get traffic instantly. But as soon as you stop paying, say goodbye, there's no traffic anymore. Uh, it shut down automatically. Now, on the other side is the free word, which say free. But in order to get free traffic, you need to do something to have it. And you need to do what we call, you know, promote your, on the social yeah. media, on everything. And we will maybe talk about it later, but there's lots of activities you need to do. It's free in sense, you know, it's not out of pocket money, like you said, but it has your time. So like you said, your time also worth something. But there is one advantage on doing the free stuff, which is the fact that we see that uh, it has longer impact. So some of the messages, some of the stuff you do, stay there for months, maybe years, and you can still get drips of traffic, although you pay nothing at a certain point. Okay, so the easiest way of boiling that down would be to say the difference between PPC, which is pay-per-click, and SEO, which is search engine optimization. PPC, like pay per person that's coming to your website. And SEO is the opposite, which is you're spending money, you're spending your time, whatever you're spending, you're trying to make yourself come up organically, which means that even though you're spending money and time now, you're hoping that with time, that traffic will continue, even though no future money or time might have to be spent to get that to happen. And I've done that myself successfully with all kinds of things, from a book that I wrote to, you know, uh, it's true across the board, essentially, except for the fact that you're at the mercy of Google, for example, that when Google decides to change their search engine algorithm, suddenly you were number one, now you're on page 56. Now, uh, I just want to mention something about what you mentioned about how, how um, you know, PPC works, let's call it, or how paid advertising works, is sometimes there's things that are a blend of the two, meaning you can have PPC, which, yes, it brings you traffic now, but but if you do the PPC right, you can also have benefit from it later. That means if I open a website and I call it zbxdvqmtv.com, which I don't even, if you ask me to repeat those letters, I wouldn't be able to because it just popped out of my head like that. If I then went and made a website with those letters and I sold on that website boxes of Kleenex tissues, then as long as I went and I got traffic from PPC, I would have a business going. And if I capture those names, of course, and, and they and, and I, I can do but ultimately that website nobody's gonna remember it and therefore once my PPC has finished it's over but if I do PPC to something where I do give the ad or the thing itself a something that sticks in your memory then I can get benefit out of it later even though I'm not advertising so for example if I do my Kleenex tissues and the domain name instead of being whatever I said before the domain name would be dirtcheapedkleenex.com okay and people bought, people got to we get to know that this website is where you can get the absolute cheapest price on legitimate not you know not imitation real Kleenex tissues then even if I stop doing PPC that would still that would still stay with people that they remember that domain name so yes there are smart ways of doing each and every one of the things with an eye toward well what's with the future 
a business should, a business should be doing both free and paid because free is good but it takes longer and you're at the mercy of Google and paid is faster it's instant results you can put an ad up today and have your site up today and start throwing traffic then working simultaneously at this even if it's long term I don't want to do Pay traffic, which is always a good idea to do if you can afford to, if the if the results justify it. But simply doing pay traffic is is it, it pays to do in the beginning because it will show you what happens to the traffic that's coming, whether it comes paid or organically. So later on, you can do the most the best possible with it. I just want to add that there's a in in America we have many different insurance companies. Now police officers have to pay higher insurance premiums, much higher insurance premiums for the most part than other people because they're in a risky job because they're police officers. Now, there's one company, New York Life, which gives, with many companies won't even insure a police officer in New York City. But there's one company, New York Life, which will give police officers uh, insurance, and they won't even charge them, they'll charge them a little more, but not like a major amount more than a uh, regular, you know, than a regular, than I would pay to get a policy. Even though I'm not, you know, considered to be in a, even though consulting is not considered a dangerous line of work, even though it seems to be sometimes. Um, if I went on Snapchat and I did a, a, a lay a, 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 a basically I did a, a Snapchat advertisement which would be laid over a specific building. So for example, in 16th Avenue we have the 66th police precinct, if I remember correctly. I can actually go onto the map in Snapchat and make a little box over the building of the police station. And now anyone who's watch who goes on Snapchat in the police station is going to see my ad. Now, who's in the police station looking at Snapchat? It's not the criminals because their phones are not with them. It's the cops. So I can really use technology, understanding the latest, how technology is changing and how advertising is changing and trying to mix together knowledge that you have from all kinds of places and putting it together. You can really make a very, you may not get directly business out of that Snapchat, but you bet your bottom dollar that if you get, if you put up that Snapchat and you get 50 views for that Snapchat and the next day you, the insurance agent, walk into that precinct, and you start talking to people about insurance, you can bet you're gonna get a nice reception for many of them because you know that out of that precinct, you got 50 views yesterday, there's only 50, 100 cops in that precinct. In any case, you have a pretty good shot of developing a good, uh, you know, of, get, of getting some business closed. There's lots of very powerful cutting edge ways of using all this new technology to do very, to make very old fashioned kind of money. Awesome, so, so you, you, you touched a point, you said cutting edge, uh, technology or cutting edge uh, strategies or cutting edge advertising, whatever you want to call it, but it, it's cutting edge. And most business owners are either doing very little online, if at all, or doing some stuff, but always saying, oh, I, I have no time, it's too much, too much social. The PPC most business and owners. Now, oh, now we're talking about uh, Snapchat and, and so many others. Every day, yeah, we have a new uh, social network coming, a new technology. So, how can a, a business owner? actually from your perspective um, handle and, and choose the right thing that fits to him okay well first of all most business owners either haven't tried social media or they've tried it and gotten burnt now whichever of those two they are either they're hesitating because they know other people got burnt or they didn't got burnt so it's quite hard to try to convince them that there is profit and money to be made there can you elaborate what what do you mean uh, and I'm sorry to avoid you know cut in what do you mean burnt? Burnt means they've spent money and they've gotten, uh, they, they have nothing to show for their money. They feel they've been scammed by all these they social media gurus. Hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars, and they, they didn't make any income off it or very little. Right, but, uh, okay, right. But I want to I I take that and move it back. Like, like I want to zoom out, okay? So uh, we had a little bit uh, technical difficulties. So let's go back a little bit back, and we were talking about the fact of people being hurt or, or, or being, uh, you know, uh, taken for a ride in terms of spending money and losing money on paid advertising? Okay. A small bu a business owner that gets scammed or that feel, uh, that gets, let's call it scammed or gets taken for a ride by a social media guru is the same guy, essentially, if he thinks back five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, he was putting an ad in the paper and his graphics person and the newspaper person was telling him you have to put the ad in nine weeks in a row until it makes an impression on somebody you have to and he spent the money making the ad and he spent the money putting in the ad and he got nothing to show for it um, 
you can't become an expert at every kind of social media and you shouldn't be trying to become an expert at every different kind of social media but understanding if you know what you do and people are telling you different ideas for how to grow your business you should you shouldn't try to you should not try to be doing all of them you should be picking specific ones that make sense to you which you understand not because you understand social media but because you understand what its equivalent is in the old school world and i'll give you an example of that believe it or not I had, a, I had a meeting with somebody about a week ago who does not know what to, he heard of Facebook, but he's not on it. He doesn't know what it is. And he's basically telling me all kinds of things that he heard this and he heard that. So I was thinking to myself, what kind of example can I give this gentleman that he would understand what Facebook is? He was basically scared that if you have a Facebook page, then people could write things when you're sleeping on your Facebook page and they could be terrible things about you. I can go on your Facebook page and I can write that you're the most terrible person and, and you know and you, you're sleeping and everyone can see it and it's terrible so I told them I said so I, you know I had this I had this idea of an example that when you go into a, a man let's say I was for example in the uh, British ambassador's residence in Tel Aviv so when you go into the residence there's a big picture of the Queen and under the picture of the Queen there's a big book like a big empty notebook like a guest book you you write I had a wonderful dinner thank you ambassador Isamar so I said to the gentleman, I said, imagine you have such a book when someone walks into your house and people write nice things. Hello, we had such a great time. Hello, thank you so much for the delicious food, whatever. People write all kinds of nice things. And then one day somebody comes and takes a page and writes on it, you, the owner of this house, are a despicable human being and whatever, you know, and writes a whole negative, nasty thing about you. Well, the next time you open that book and the next time you come across that comment, you'll take a scissor or a razor blade very gently and you'll cut that page out. Because you can't, even if you, you know, you, you can't possibly be busy 24-7 with it. And as much, it's, it's just impossible. What you can do is you can, you can come, when the next time you see it, when you get back to work or whatever, you can then delete what somebody else put there. There's some people who are going to say, no, don't put anything on, don't let anyone post on your wall or anything like that. But if you're trying to be interactive, you're trying to do business, you're trying to let most people, most people are normal, nice, friendly people, to be the people that they are, all you have to do is that when someone does something nasty, then you have to deal with it at that point, delete it, block them, whatever. Once they understood the example from something that they knew and were comfortable with, they got Facebook. Till that point, they were just they had heart palpitations thinking about why would they put their business on a site where people could write bad things about them. It's about understanding from your own a good place what the social what whether it's social media or not social media what you're trying to accomplish in this new age of advertising and marketing and then dealing with it in a way that makes you comfortable you don't have to be an expert at it but you should know what's flying not just give somebody money and, and, and close your eyes and say just do whatever you want and then be disappointed awesome so you, you actually touch a very important point so before first you said about uh, you know advertising and then and, and and talk about the newspaper and this is what we call today some kind of uh, hope marketing which you hope it will work and you rather know exactly that's the internet the internet allows you to measure the internet much better than any other media the internet allows you to change it so fast so you do something and in a couple of hours you can do something else and improve it and change it as you go but like you said at the end of the day you need to have some kind of uh, um, understanding of, of, of that you know some of my clients are so not tech savvy I'm not as well but and I don't think you're not a technical person as well but I'm always saying we understand the media we understand how it works so if you're a business owner and that's basically what you said and this is what we're saying all the time we agree on that you should understand how it works and how you can utilize it towards your business you don't necessarily need to know every bit and bite and Especially, you don't need to actually do that. Okay, so uh, uh, there's a famous Jewish bread which is eaten on, on, on Shabbat, which is called challah. Now, people, whether they're Jewish or not, will know about this beautiful, braided, delicious challah. It tastes really good. Now, if I go over to someone, I say, tell me, who makes the best challah in New York? They may say, oh, go to that bakery in Borough Park or whatever. They have the best challah. What people are usually not going to say is the best challah is made by Mrs. Lieberman, who lives in Queens. Why? Because while Mrs. Lieberman might be the best challah baker in America, 
Since she doesn't sell her challah, people wouldn't be aware that she's the best challah baker in America. So when people are asking who's the best challah baker in America, what they really mean to ask, what they're really trying to ask, is which bakery has the best challah. The business of making challah, not the business, the, the, the art of making challah, and the business of making challah have two separate people at the top. The person who makes a delicious bread doesn't mean they don't understand the business. And the person who, has the, who understands the business and is able to do a lot of business selling the bread doesn't really mean they have the best bread. If you're in business, then your goal is to do the best, essentially to do the best business, to make the best transactions you can with the product that you happen to be selling. I'd rather you have a good product and a great sales process than a great product and a terrible sales process. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you, the business owner, you, the business listen, you, the business owner listening to this, to this um, podcast has to think the following. I'm in business. X, Y, and Z, this is what I do. Now that this is what I do, how can I best continue to get more and more money doing this? And that's the part where it's important to understand advertising, how social media is changing, how preferences are changing, how LinkedIn is changing with the ways people do business. I mean, how testimonial videos are changing. Some of these things may seem like, what does that have to do with me? But the internet has totally changed. When I see a testimonial from somebody on a product, I'm going to go check out Google that person's name. I want to know who that person is. And then not necessarily because if I think it's real or fake, even if I know it's real, well, what? who is this guy? What does this guy do? Is he, a, is he successful and therefore his testimonial to that person means all the more than if this guy is just, you know, a nobody? There's a very good tool, by the way, called Rapportive. This uh, R-A-P-P-O-R-T-I-V-E. There's other tools like it, Connect6 and others. Yeah, but essentially, tool, I use it myself as well. Yeah, these tools help you know exactly who you're emailing and who's emailed you and what they want and, 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 and how you should respond to that person and what level of seriousness you should be giving to this conversation. If I get a random email from some guy and his email address, I never heard of the guy in my life, and his email address is William at Microsoft. So I know something about him because he's at Microsoft. So I know he's, he probably, if he works for a major, you know, a major company, he's, okay, it's worth some consideration as opposed to William at gmail.com. But how about if William at Gmail, if William at Microsoft.com popped up in my reporter window as Bill Gates, Bill is William. Suddenly, I'm going to treat that email with a whole different level of attention than if it was just William, you know, William Smith, who's the janitor in a, in a Microsoft office someplace in the Middle East. Absolutely, you know, it's important to know. You were talking on on using the power of the internet for uh, interaction, the right interaction with people, which is, uh, you know, the internet is amazing. We are both great advocates of the internet. And you know, when I'm talking on 10x your business, uh, first of all, we're going into the online. That's the easiest place because you actually can still sit and do, you know, and do it from wherever you are. But it's also about the networking and finding the right people, connecting the right people like we did connect. And you know, where I was talking about the internet a little bit, the internet lifestyle. So you know, you, you were blessed and myself as well, uh, first of all, with an amazing family. Uh, how many kids you have? Four, I think. Four. Four. So we have four. Together, between two, the two of us, we have eight. And we still travel. We still speak. We still have our lifestyle, uh, what some people call the business lifestyle, the internet lifestyle. Uh, you have other activities, which is uh, in concern to your religious side. How do you, you know, manage, you know, okay. uh, and how do you... You know, like this amazing. First of all, there's something there's something I want to address, which is based on what you brought up, which is something I would like to call the big lie. Okay, now the big lie in this in this regard is this thing about work life balance. If you work for a company where you and, and it's getting harder and harder because everyone's connected to their you know we used to be BlackBerry all the time now it's whatever phone, and you're constantly expected to be accessible at work and answering emails on, on four o'clock on a Sunday morning, but ultimately. In, at least officially, in corporate America, you're supposed to be able to come in at 9 o'clock, work all day long, 5.01, leave the office, and not think about work till the following morning at 9 o'clock. It doesn't really work like that, but at least in theory. If you want to live what you're calling the internet lifestyle, which means you want to be able to be home when you want, you want to be able to start a business without major investment in infrastructure and building a factory or whatever. You really want to be able to start on a shoestring and you want to be able to grow a business without, 
with committing additional brains, not additional money, you know, as much as possible, then work-life balance doesn't exist. They coexist. Um, so it's important for people who want to do this to understand that it's it, it's wonderful, and you know, and and. And I love doing it, and I and I you know I recommend it to everybody. But it's important to understand that if you think that you're going to be able to do to, to you know to run an internet business or a business whatever the, whatever you're selling doesn't really matter. A business that you're going to use the new tools, the new technology, and the knowledge that's out there to develop and to build upon what you currently have, or to start something new. You have to know there is no balance, meaning there's coexistence. Yes, okay, now I have a client, then I'm going to, now, now you're now speaking to you, then I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go to some, uh, you know, to my kid's uh, graduation or something, and then I'm gonna respond to emails again. So you have to know that there is that, I don't think it's a downside, because in corporate America, it's still, it's like that today as well, but people might perceive it as a downside, and it's important that that be addressed that you have to understand that work-life balance does not exist in real life. Uh, it's like walking on a tightrope. Yeah, okay, it sounds, yeah, it's balancing, but you, do you really want to live your life like that every minute trying to make sure you don't fall and crash and burn? God forbid. You have to understand that they work together. Work and life have become one. It's not two separate things anymore. You know, for example, I, my business and my personal life are really one. You know, there's no like when I'm at work, I'm at work, and when I'm not, I'm not. Everywhere I go, people that know me, you know, I, I, everywhere from being, you know, in the barber chair to being on a plane to being, uh, uh, you know, when I go to synagogue, if people know you, if you're if you're one person and you're out there with you know with your name and 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 building a successful business, then essentially, you know, my children ask me sometimes what's going on at work because they they hear what's going on. You know, they know when my when my picture's in the front page of the newspaper, they want to read it because they're you know I'm on I'm on the cover. It sort of it, it becomes a big happy mishmash, uh, and it's and and uh, you know I just think it's very important to stress that point because people who think they're going to do this and somehow carefully demarcate the hours that they're going to be in business and the hours they're going to be at, at home doesn't really work that way. You know, uh, Mark Cuban, you know, the billionaire Mark Cuban said, uh, "Entrepreneur or entrepreneurship is not uh, uh, a." A business or, or, or who you are it's basically a lifestyle being an entrepreneur is a lifestyle and like you said you know when we're talking about 10x like I said the work is around the clock but the nice thing is you can choose whenever you want to work and people are talking about being uh, able to uh, you know freedom when you have you know when you're millionaires you know we can do whatever we want we can do uh, any anytime anything we want but the question is, what do we choose? And I, when we have events, I always ask people, so who knows Warren Buffett? And I'm asking people, so, okay, you know, he is a billionaire. You know, he is the second or the first richest person on earth. So, and he's 80 something, 86. So who thinks that he wakes up every morning at 10 o'clock in the morning? No one raises their hand. So who thinks nine, seven, six? When I start six, five, by four o'clock, everyone already putting their hands up. And the fact is, we can, he can choose to work, not to wake up early in the morning, but he chooses to do that. And I think it goes the same for us. We have the option, unless we have a call with someone or, or something pre-scheduled, we can say, okay, we choose this morning, I don't know, to sit down with our you know, kids or a wife and have a, have a nice breakfast and do whatever we want. But usually we, we're, we love what we do and that's all about connecting with that and have the lifestyle, do what you love, and love what you do, and just keep on going and running. And it was a very okay. powerful point you said. So two things about that. Number one is is that Napoleon Bonaparte, the, the emperor of France, uh, once said that he can't sleep very much at night because when he sleeps, he doesn't feel like he's the emperor of France. <laughs> so you know why sleep when you're sleeping? You're just you're just a body in a bed. When you're up, you're the, you're the king. You know it's like. Um, the other thing is is that I have a client who uh, last night I was, he needed something done emergency and basically we had discussed that he, while he was flying on a plane he would have Wi-Fi and we would do it together. He gets on the plane and there's no Wi-Fi. No wi he was flying from, uh, I forgot from where, I think from Seattle to New York or something, I don't remember, he was flying somewhere in, on, on that side back to New York and today's in Orlando actually. 
Uh, there was no direct flight from there to Orlando. We had to be today, so he figured if he has to take a, uh, an indirect flight anyway, he might just as well sleep at home in New York in his own bed. Anyway, so I ended up staying up for him till he landed because we had to finish this thing. Um, and then by the time I was done, it was morning outside. So I went to pray the morning prayers and, and you know, in the shul in the synagogue. And then I went to sleep till my one o'clock meeting. I woke my kids. I made sure they got out of bed, you know, da -da -da -da, prepared snacks for them, to take to school. And then I went to sleep. I slept from eight o'clock in the morning or something like that until 1 p.m. If I had a job, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, it, it, it's great. I mean, if I want to sleep, I can sleep. If I'm up all night, I can burn the midnight oil and accomplish lots of stuff on my list. I'm also speaking in New York on Sunday morning, so I had some stuff to arrange as far as that's concerned. So I stayed up all night. Nothing stopping me. That's because you love what you do, and, and that's awesome. So um, I, I want to go back a little bit to the business owners and talk about just to, to – so a business owner, like I said, either doing something or, or, or doing nothing online, what – would be the next maybe one two steps that you would say to someone who is doing very little or nothing or someone who's already doing something we don't know yet what but he's doing some social work you know a little bit facebook but what are the steps or advice you can tell them in order to 10x to to boost their results on, on using the online okay i once mentioned this actually at one of your seminars I think when you when when I when I was Mister I was like a, the mystery speaker at one of your seminars and I heard Celia Marina or something. Yeah, that was uh, we called it Mister X MRX. Was but it was but it was it was, an, it was an amazing upscale high end event and I remember you know I met even till today I remember some of the people that I met there really uh, you know really good people. Okay, um, essentially I want your listeners to think to, I want them to take a pen and paper. Or if they don't have that, or not, you know, to take open your uh, paint program, the old-fashioned paint on your computer, and draw a picture. Now, this ladder should have, I don't know, let's say uh, five or six rungs. All right, you make two lines, and you make a bunch of rungs across the ladder. What I want to explain to you is how the social media ladder works, and this is not only relevant to social media; it's relevant in general to understanding how business gets built, how you build from somebody you don't know into making them, essentially having them hopefully your best friend or best client or whatever. So the bottom rung of the ladder, I want you to put Twitter. I'm going to make a simplified ladder. I'm not going to mention every type of social media thing out there. We're going to make it very simple. It's going to be Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, email, phone. Now, let's say, let's go, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, Hmm, who should we pick? Let's talk about Donald Trump. He's in the news. I don't think he'll win the election. I'm going here uh, live and saying that I do not believe he will win. I do not think the Americans are ultimately, even if those who think, or even those that are rooting for him, and I'm kind of rooting for myself in a certain respect, I don't think ultimately America is going to take the chance on, a, on, 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 a, on an unpredictable person you know, around the country. Into details, you, know, you will be measured on that because it's recorded. And in a few months... Uh, someone hears this podcast again and say, oh, this is Lamar. He, he nailed it, or he, hmm, he missed Fair it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but, but, I, once, I, once, I once tweeted about this, and I got a message from someone saying, please do not delete your tweet. I'm, I'm going to retweet it after whoever wins, wins. Uh, and I said, I'm not going to delete it. I, I could be wrong. I mean, America, you know, look, look, we had this terrorist attack with, the, with this, with this uh, you know, guy shooting 50 people in, 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 in Orlando, right? That can tip the elections. I don't know the future. Any, there's a million things that can happen between now and election day that would change that. Even today, the day we're making this podcast, you know, the voting is going on in England about the Brexit. That can also affect the American elections. Impossible to predict the future accurately. I will tell you that if Donald Trump picks Mike Bloomberg for a vice presidential pick, then I do believe he will win. Meaning to say if he picks the right vice presidential candidate, which makes people think he's stable as opposed to irrational, I believe he can win. I believe he does have a chance of winning. But anyway, ultimately, I don't think he will win the way things look right now. I do want, before you go to, through the ladder and give just an example, uh, as a business side for, for Donald Trump, I do want to say one thing. Uh, you, you, you were talking about, um, you know, if something happens, you know, all kind of uh, unexpected, uh, and, and not just unexpected, some it's, it's things we can't even uh, control that can happen and shift the market and change all kinds of thing, things. And that's a nice great or greatest thing about the internet, the internet grows every day. 
every day. And that's an opportunity for everyone. So as long as you have uh, lots of activities online, you were talking in the beginning, you know, about do, don't just do one thing. Try to do a little bit, few stuff. It's like we, we don't like one, it's called, it's called one business, that you have one client or one marketing channel or one product that you, eventually you, you can be exposed into something. So it's really powerful, actually, the internet in terms of uh, when there is, like, uh, there's a saying when the shit hit the fan, then at least you have, you know, you have multiple sources of potential clients, so you're not hurt if something like that happens. So let's go back to the letter. So we try start with Twitter, and you were talking about Donald Trump. Okay, so even though I mentioned Donald Trump, because he's an example that all the listeners will be familiar with, it's important to note that for the most part, Donald Trump does not respond to tweets. Once in a while he does, so he's a good, I could use him for this example, but you know, there, when, you look, when you're looking at someone's Twitter profile, if you click on not just tweets, but tweets and replies, you can see if this person is using Twitter as a megaphone, as a broadcast platform only, or if he actually interacts with people on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Now, so now we have Twitter, we have, so let's, on the top I said is phone, right? We have Twitter, then we have LinkedIn, Facebook, email, phone. So I'm going to call up 212 area code, whatever Donald Trump's number is. I'm going to get, hello, the Trump organization. Hello, can I speak to Donald? What do you think the answer is going to be? No. No. I'm not even going to get to Donald's assistant's assistant, second assistant. Probably. Maybe the door. Because, because their goal is, the goal of these people are gatekeepers. The goal is to keep you from getting to the person you're trying to reach. Now, let's go down a step. How about if I email Donald Trump? I get his email address, and I say, hello, Donald. I really would like to talk to you about whatever. Um, do you think you can get a response? No, uh, you're not going to get a response. It's probably from his PA or something like that. You're certainly not going to get to him. Mm -hmm. Now, if I tweet to Donald Trump, of the different possibilities, that's the most likely possibility of me getting a response from Donald Trump. Why? Because Twitter is ultimately a place where people are meant to interact with people they do not know. If I don't know you, I'm not taking your Facebook request. If I'm not taking your LinkedIn request, I'm not having anything to do with you. If I don't know you, or at least we don't know the same people in common. But Twitter, you can on Twitter get to anybody if they're using Twitter as an interactive medium, not just as a broadcast medium, and you can get their attention. Now, just as an aside, back to what I was saying earlier about Reportive or about these other tools like it, you can actually know, but get, if you have someone's email address, it will tell you the person's Twitter handle and their Facebook um, you know, profile and their LinkedIn profile and other places they might be. The reason why that's important is because if I have someone's email address, instead of emailing them and just being another email, I'm going to go to my email, do compose. I'm not going to send them a letter. I'm just going to click compose and put their email address into the two bar. And then on the side, see their Twitter handle, then go to Twitter and Twitter try to interact and engage with them there because that's a much less threat than you're trying to get to to interact with you on. So essentially, once I'm connected to you on Twitter and we have a back and forth, and by the way, I've, I've made tremendous connections on Twitter and many of the things I'm, places I do today and I've spoken today have started in some form or other from different social media connections that I've made. But in addition to that, you have the... Um, you have so essentially on Twitter you can you, you can interact with people that you don't know. Once you have interact with them back and forth, and you know I've gotten retweets from people with you know millions of followers and stuff. Um, you can then connect with them on LinkedIn because now I know you somewhat. I, I've I've spoken to you on Twitter. You now know me. You may not accept my LinkedIn connection request, but if you don't, you're not going to click it. That I don't know this person. You're just not going to accept it. The point is I can then slowly scale up the ladder from being a stranger to being a friend. And that's true both in social media, it's true in the world in general, but it's important to understand how it works because if you're going to spend time learning something new, you want to sp spend that time optimally. Now, in, in, uh, when I was a kid, before the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, the we used to make like a, the, a picture like a, with a crayon or whatever. We used to color in a picture of a scale. And there was like two sides of the scale. One was like the mitzvot, the good deeds, and one was the bad deeds. And basically, which one is, it weighs down, you know, which, which one is more? You're supposed to have more good stuff than bad stuff in your, in your scale. So the good stuff weighs down, which means, you know, you're safe. You're, you're, you've done a good job. Now, I find business to be very much the same way, which means is one side is time and one side is money on that scale. The more money you spend, the less time you need to accomplish the same goal. 
the less money you want to spend, you can still get there, but it'll take you much longer because you'll have to spend time instead of money. So some people are billionaires. They're just like, here's the money and you know, keep going. Some people don't have a penny. They're on a shoestring and they have no choice to spend all the time. But for the average, not that you're average, you're a great guy, Mr. You know, Mr. Listener, but for the regular person who's neither here nor there, the goal is to find an optimal middle point where I get the information I need and I pay for it to save time but I don't go just throwing money out the window. I'm willing to learn and to engage myself in order to get a result that uses a little, some money and some time so that I don't have to spend too much of each one in order to get where I'm going as fast as possible. Awesome, awesome. There's one more thing I wanted, you know, I, I went through your Facebook, uh, you know, I do read your Facebook page. Uh, Okay, I want I want to leave you as a friend then if you're reading it. <laughs> you, you you actually caught me right on the point. So I, I I'll read what what you just you wrote there yesterday was uh, getting ready to unfriend people, the ones whom I never heard from, who never like, uh, comment or interact with three dots. If we are connected, I should know who you are more than someone I might someday have some interaction with. So, um, you know, can you, you know, I did it myself, so I, I want to, you know, what were your thoughts about that? Yeah. First, you got to mention how many comments and likes it has so far. Okay, so you had 228 so far uh, likes or, you know, whatever it is, likes and reactions and mm -hmm. interactions and 113, 113 uh, comments. Okay. So I should like it, right? Oh, I like it already, so I won't be... Deleted. Okay. Now, um, I have, besides followers, I have about 4,000 friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to do with most of them. I shouldn't say most. I don't know. I, I never, like, you know, made a mathematical calculation. But there's many people who have, you know, either I connected to them, they connected to me. Who knows? Who remembers? At some point in time, there must have been some reason that some connection was made. Facebook is not the same Facebook it was a couple of years ago, uh, even though it has the same name and it's thought of by people as the same thing. There's an algorithm on Facebook. Uh, there's actually somebody, Itai, that you and I both know, I won't mention his name here, who runs a very, uh, he's a very, uh, um, very big medical office. They run a very big medical office and they worked very hard on getting many, many, many fans for their Facebook page, for their business. And then one fine day Facebook says, oh, whenever you post on this page, only 0.01% of your fans that you pay to get and that you work so hard to get are going to see it unless you give us money to boost your post. And he's spending approximately, uh, if I remember correctly, about $1,500 per post just so that all the people that are already his fans see it. So people went out there, they built audiences, and yet Facebook decided that unless you pay them, your people are not going to see it. But there are tricks, there are techniques to get around that without paying a fortune. One of those just random, uh, you know, random, you'll, you're, 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 you, your um, listeners to this wonderful podcast will enjoy is if you put up a picture of a baby, it's going to be seen by everybody, even though you didn't pay. Why? Well, because Facebook has an algorithm which is, works in a couple of different things. And one of them is that people like pictures of babies. And if you're putting up a picture of a baby, it might be you're saying you had a baby. And therefore, it's something that if all your people that you're in touch with don't know about, you're going to get annoyed at Facebook, stupid Facebook. I, I notified my network, you know, my friends, I had a baby and nobody knew. Facebook's a waste of time. So whenever you're going to post something that Facebook thinks is going to be really important to your friends, they're going to show it. The next thing is how many reactions did it get and how soon of a time. So let's say I post something at 6 o'clock in the morning. Or, I mean, there wouldn't be an optimal time to post something if I wanted lots of views. But just for example, I post something 6 o'clock in the morning, and by 6.02, Facebook showed it to 20 people. And of those 20 people that saw it, 10 reacted or commented or liked or shared or whatever. Facebook says, okay, this is something that's interesting to people. And therefore, even though he didn't pay us, let's share it with a much larger portion of his audience. And then if more of those people click like, then it goes even larger. And, and essentially, based on what Facebook thinks your people that you're in touch with want to read, that's how it decides what people get to see or don't see. For some reason, and by the way, life is all about experiments. For some reason, whenever you post something which, so for example, I posted this thing, which is basically, look, I got 4,000 friends. 
Um, I don't know a lot of you. I feel quite, you know, I never hear from you. I mean, not, not even a birthday hello, like nothing. I don't recognize your name. We have nothing to do with each other. So I could have just gone and deleted people. But why not? Instead of deleting people, why not give people a chance to sort of say, you know, I appreciate you. I know you exist, whatever. So simply by posting this post, I actually lost one friend, believe it or not. You know who? <laughs> don't mention his name here. Okay. <laughs> um, and he said, if you want to delete people, just delete them, but don't announce it. But what's funny is I didn't actually delete people and then announce I deleted people. I said I'm preparing to delete. I have a lot of people. I'm preparing to delete people. I didn't make a list yet. I didn't do anything yet. Don't delete. Unfriend. Unfriend, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, unfriend. Correct. I'm not deleting them. They can still follow me. Actually, if you unfriend someone, but you don't block them, they sort of automatically follow. They can still see what you're writing. You're just not one of their friends. Especially now that Facebook has the follow button, which is its own discussion. But um, it's amazing how many people I haven't heard from in such a long time. Besides the, the, the you know, the, the the likes and the shares and the, and the comments, I'm talking about private messages. I'm talking about people who sent me a message saying. You know, I, I am, I'm a quiet person. I'm on Facebook, but I try not to post. Um, please keep me. And the people who say, you know, um, I had one guy come to me and say, you know, I am an attorney living in, I won't say where, um, and I'd like to work with you. I, got, I, I actually made money. Here's just an example. Back to what we were discussing earlier. I actually made money off that post. Okay? Now, the fact that people saw that and the fact that people started reacting to it made Facebook show it to more and more people. There are people who haven't seen my post. They wrote in the thing. They haven't seen me in I don't know how long. They just, unless you go through your list of Facebook friends, you don't know who your friends are. They haven't seen anything from me in a long time. Why should they like? Why should they share? They haven't even seen it. As funny as it, or as knowledgeable or as whatever as it might have been, if they didn't see it, they can't like it. Awesome. Once uh, you have a post on Facebook, the connection to those people becomes stronger and they see your other posts as well. You know, uh, this this is like a perfect topic to end this uh, podcast, and I'll tell you why. This is the essence of what, what I love so much about you. You know, for a long time, or the past couple of years, we use the same technique in different way on email marketing. So if you're not active, we actually send you emails asking you, hey, you know, do you want to be on our list? If not, just click here and, you know, unsubscribe. And we even have uh, one email that we send that says, uh, take us out of our misery and just throw yourself out and you see when you send this kind of email suddenly lots of people that are on the list and are like sleeping and not active they're not opening so much they're not clicking suddenly oh they're they're live some people do leave and that's okay some send us an email oh you want to delete me so delete me that's okay and, th and what I wanted to emphasize other than the fact that it's a great strategy you actually took it into the social media which is amazing that's what I love about you you can take this stuff and find other ways to implement it in, in a powerful way in different platforms, which are not email marketing, which people can actually take this amazing tip and use it. And I might even do it myself. I hope I get a hat tip in your... In your uh, hashtag. Hash, no, hat tip. Okay. Ha, hashtag, but a hat tip meaning, you know, you take a hat yeah. and you say yeah. hat tip. I'll, I'll blame you. I'll say this is because uh, my great friend is some against said to do this. Thank you, thank you. Isamar, um, is there anything, you know, just before we end this? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I must say something very, very, very important. To all the people listening to this podcast, you better email Itai right away and say, I want him again. I want him back. If you don't do that, it's your fault that I'm not going to be back on this podcast. See, now I'm doing the same thing I did on Facebook. I'm doing it here. If you want me back again, you got to be active. You got to say something. Now, it, and if you don't want me back again, Email Itai saying, we don't want that guy again. Why? Because as long as you interact and you show you're alive, we'll all be happy. Some people, you know, every person has a certain number of people that like what they say and like their personality and like how they say things, and others who are turned off by it. That's fine. It's better to be loved or hated than just tolerated. Absolutely. So with that, I hand it back to you. Thank you for a wonderful, wonderful podcast. It's been a pleasure. And... Um, yeah. If anybody wants to reach me, my email, my website is my first name, Isamar, I-S-S-A-M-A-R, Isamar.com. And my email address is my first name, Isamar, I-S-S-A-M-A-R, at, can you guess? Again, Isamar at Isamar.com. And thank you so much, Itai. Awesome. So thank you very much for being here and for sharing everything.
thank you for all the listening, uh, you know, the listeners on the call. And I look forward to see you on the next podcast. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the 10X Your Business podcast with Itai Paz at www.itaipaz.net slash podcast. We will be back with another great podcast next week. If you're digging what you're hearing, your next step is to go to iTunes and in the search box, type 10X Your Business. Click on Itai's picture and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And if you're feeling generous and you want to help other business owners and entrepreneurs like you to find this podcast, then give us your rating and review. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.